Mary Lou Williams, who wound up at the end of her career teaching jazz history, was the living embodiment of it, and often one step ahead of it. She was active in the jazz scene from the early 1920s through the 1970s as a pianist, composer, and mentor. That she was a woman is almost incidental to the body of work she amassed, but it has to be taken into account since she was a relative rarity. It would be hard to point to another woman who had as big an impact on the evolution of the music in the first half of the jazz century. Mary Scruggs was born in 1910 and raised in East Liberty, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Pittsburgh. A promoter later suggested the change to Mary Lou, and Williams was the name of her first husband. She was evidently a child prodigy who taught herself to play and started earning money by the time she was six. She was known as the Little Piano Girl from East Liberty. In the early 1920s, at the age of 12, she traveled on the Orpheum Circuit, which was a chain of vaudeville houses. She played with a group called McKinley's Cotton Pickers, and she sat in with Duke Ellington's Washingtonians when she was 13. In 1927, a 17-year-old Mary Lou married a sax player named John Williams, who got a gig with Andy Kirk and his Twelve Clouds of Joy. The Twelve Clouds of Joy were a highly regarded Kansas City Territory band. People like Howard McGee, Fats Navarro, and Charlie Parker all played in the band at one time or another, creating a connection to bebop, which would have significance in Mary Lou Williams' later career. Mary Lou wrote arrangements for the group before eventually joining as pianist and featured soloist. Here she is demonstrating the infectious bounce that was characteristic of stride style. <laughs> records featuring Mary Lou's arrangements established her reputation, and she started to get calls from other band leaders. Benny Goodman offered her an exclusive contract to write for him, but she chose to remain freelance. In the early 1940s, she had a short second marriage to Shorty Baker, a trumpet player who had played with Kirk and then got a gig with Duke Ellington. Mary Lou traveled with Duke's band and wrote several arrangements for them. In Duke's words, Mary Lou Williams has always been a little ahead throughout her career. Her music is timeless. She is like soul on soul. In the mid-1940s, Mary Lou moved to New York and hosted a radio show called Mary Lou Williams Piano Workshop. That was a groundbreaking gig for a black woman. She found herself smack dab in the middle of the emerging bebop scene, and her apartment became a hang zone for the new generation of musicians for whom she acted as a mentor. She eventually tired of the musician's lifestyle and retired from performing. Having seen many of her friends in the bebop scene suffer from drug addiction, she founded the Bel Canto Foundation to help musicians recover. Around the same time, she converted to Catholicism. A priest was among those who encouraged her to return to music, and she began composing religious works, including a mass that was commissioned by the Vatican in 1969. She formed her own record company, Mary Records, which was the first record company owned by a woman. In her last decade, the 1970s, Mary Lou was not a fan of all the modern trends in jazz, especially the amalgamation with rock music, but she did perform with the avant-garde pianist Cecil Taylor. She wound up her career teaching jazz history and leading the jazz ensemble at Duke University in North Carolina. Now, wouldn't it be great to take a course like this from someone who had been there every step of the way? Mary Lou Williams' career was a steady succession of firsts. In 1946, she was the first to take Leonard Feather's blindfold test for Downbeat magazine. At the time, bebop was a controversial new music that elicited strong opinions pro and con. Feather was a fan, and he said this about Mary Lou's test. Mary Lou set the pace perfectly. Her praise for modernists gave pause to the diehard scribes who, because of their respect for her as a musician, gave her comments serious consideration. In 1978, Mary Lou was the first guest on Marion McPartland's Piano Jazz, a show that ran on national public radio from 1978 until 2011. It was the longest-running show on NPR. In the picture on the right, you see Mary Lou Williams and Marion McPartland with Thelonious Monk during the Great Day in Harlem photo shoot in 1958. This quote from Mary Lou Williams sums up an extraordinary life from an extraordinary musician. I did it, didn't I? Through muck and mud. Here's a great solo piano performance recorded while Mary Lou was in Chicago for a recording session with Andy Kirk. 
In the picture on the right, she's sitting with her nephew in Birdland. Here are a few clips of Mary Lou Williams' Music for Peace, which became known as Mary Lou's Mass, choreographed and premiered by the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in 
The Jazz History Series continues in the next episode. Before you go there, please take half a second to click the like button for this one. Thank you.